Oh yeah. Yes, it's true. We're also, on the fritz. Our don't say anything until a relationship. I tell you to. So it's time for you to face it. Why don't I just say it? <laughs> I'm just not that in you. <laughs> There's your clarity. But if I dump you, you get charity. That's not fair to me. So I gotta get you to not care for me. That's what I'm gonna Will do. I meet your dad? No. Your hurt, do I feel bad? No. Will I pick up your tab? <laughs> uh-uh. Well then, uh, that's that. Why don't you dump me? Oh, 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 I don't answer when you call And I don't care when you cry So why don't you tell me Please, oh, oh, oh I'm doing everything right By doing everything wrong So ain't gonna meet your family no. Ain't gonna go to no college shot. Won't work a nine to five for you You know it's true So tell me what do I got Welcome to the Muddy Wonders of Freedom with your hosts, 
Matt Wright, and Mohammed Shaker. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome to the Vanguard for Muhammad. I got nothing today. Shaker, I am Matt Wright, and together we are traversing the muddied waters of freedom. What's up, buddy? Hey, man, how are you doing today? I am freaking fantastic today. Good. Freaking, freaking fantastic. Uh, first and foremost, let us thank Low Tide Kava Bar for the kava that we drank on this oh, and every yeah. show. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Justin. Justin. <laughs> it's all you can drink kava there today. 20 bucks. Bula. Bula. <laughs> we are getting some serious feedback today. I blame Muhammad. Yeah, it is weird, but it's not that bad. No. Anyway. All right. So, for all of you who are watching out there in Facebook world, you can see that we are considerably better looking today for multiple reasons. New camera. New camera. New new way of presenting the entire show yeah. when we do it live. And a much better looking co-host. So I would like to introduce pre-2000, I was about to say 1997. <laughs> <laughs> pre-2017, Katy Perry, Taylor, Marie, Anderson, welcome to the Muddied Waters of Freedom. Hey guys, how's it going? Fantastic. It's going pretty good. So we introduced you on our last show, but you weren't on it, so nobody got to witness any of that but uh <laughs> <laughs> but uh she is our new editor-in-chief and uh yeah so uh if you wouldn't mind telling all of our listeners and watchers a little bit about yourself that would be wonderful oh, i hate this it's like speed dating it is speed dating. um, <laughs> <laughs> um two okay so i have been a state chair with young americans for liberty two for two years a little over two years and I volunteer with uh, Students for Liberty, and I don't know, I just kind of consider myself a professional internet troll. That's kind of what I do all day long. So, uh, yeah, uh, I like Liberty, and uh, I try to spread it all throughout social media. So, that's kind of what I do. Excellent. So you're like a female Muhammad. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> Much he probably has a lot more freedom in what he can post. It'll get me fired from Yow if I get too bad. So. <laughs> Is that why you're not with Yow anymore? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I, I want to be uncensored on social media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess I wasn't as bad as I am now when I was with Yow. So I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say I would hope not. Yeah. I've, I was never able to test that. But when I get back, when I get back into school next semester, I'll find out. Because <laughs> I mean, I'll be going right back into Yale, so <laughs> probably definitely not as a state chair. I, I don't want to do Liberty Points again. So or the I, new thing. I, okay, so I, thing. I just have to point this out because I thought this was absolutely hilarious. Because I posted, "Welcome Taylor, pre two thousand seventeen, Katy Perry Anderson to our show," and Katy Perry News's Twitter liked it, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think Katy Perry knows who we are. <laughs> <laughs> Nor is she gonna like. Also, it's That's kind right. of slightly an insult, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're not the brightest, all right. No, <laughs> as you can tell by post twenty seventeen. Right. <laughs> uh, the sexual harasser post two thousand seventeen, <laughs> Katy Perry. Oh uh, wait, uh, uh, somebody asked me uh, offline. Uh, what video games do you like to play? Because I mentioned you have a Twitch stream. Um, so I mostly have been playing PUBG. I'm moving over to Fortnite, though, because it just runs smoother. Um, I don't know. Lately, I've just been binge playing Assassin's Creed Origins. Uh, I haven't really played Call of Duty since the Resistance event. Um, but I play Call of Duty. The what event? And 
resistance event. It was like a, kind of like pre DLC. They like they're doing like non DLC events. Kind oh. Of. And then uh, I'm so excited for Far Cry to come out on Monday. So Far Cry. Monday next. Oh, okay, okay. That's the one that got all the Nazis mad, right? Uh, no. That one shouldn't have gotten the Nazis mad. I thought people were mad because the bad guys were all white or something. I mean, it's backwoods Montana, and you're, like, fighting a cult. Yeah, okay. Well, but I, don't know. I don't think they're, like, Nazis. They're just, like, weird religious crazies. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like Outlast. Outlast. Maybe I'm not. Yeah. Maybe I'm not the best ga- video gamer as I, <laughs> as I thought I was. <laughs> I, I am so glad that I'm not the only one lost in this conversation. So yeah, I'm very yeah. happy about it. Wait, that. what's what's Outlast? <laughs> um, Outlast. Well, it's a series where it's like uh, it's like a horror game, and you have to oh, basically. Wait. There's like no fighting. This is an interactive fight, story, right? Like yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But Outlast Two is like against this really creepy backwoods cult that you're trying to escape from okay 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 yeah i i see what you're saying now yeah which isn't there's a there was a because so it's this is fine by the way because it's your first time on here we we do talk about random stuff before we get into the serious stuff yeah there's a show called the calling um that has uh god the main actor i always forget his name uh he was from the um god all right, Matt, you're you're smart. You know movies. I do. Um, <laughs> what's the movie where the guy turns invisible? The Invisible Man. Who's the main act- actor in that? Kevin Bacon. Thank you. So I think the, the show is called The Calling, starring Kevin Bacon. Wow, you went with The Invisible Man for Kevin Bacon? I am not from this country. <laughs> yes, you are. You were born in St. Pete. <laughs> <laughs> whatever <laughs> what i don't know yeah i went with the invisible man wow okay the one about the guy that gets invisible <laughs> not one of my favorite <laughs> actors i mean whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah that was the one where he was like the fbi agent yeah 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 and they're uh basically chasing down this cult leader with his crazy cult yeah that he's like a real. very charismatic Cult leader. But yeah, it wasn't a good show. No. Yeah. That I, show that show was really good for about six episodes and then it got real stupid. Yeah. But it survived <laughs> for like three seasons, I think. Uh yeah, two or three. Yeah. Yeah, that's because people are stupid. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That's um, why most of the things happen. Yeah. Yeah. Friends made it ten seasons. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. I used to watch that when I was a kid in Egypt. Did it just so hit see? Egypt so when see, I'm from there? <laughs> Did it just hit Egypt? When he... No, it's that's it always gets replays, man. Everybody watches Friends in every it's true. year. It's syndicated in, on like every episode. In every yeah, uh, on or, every sorry, in every channel. In every channel, in mm-hmm. every language. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows how the Chandler Bing says, "Oh my God!" <laughs> he does. But oh, that's cool. So you're a gamer. Yeah. Yeah. Keep doing that. I don't play a lot as much people, or as most people do. Well, I really only play a couple hours, maybe every couple days. But yeah, adds up. And funny enough, my little sister just started playing Fortnite, but I don't know if I'm going to be playing any of those games yet. They seem interesting, mm. though. Yeah, I'm. Uh, Fortnite's a little childish looking to me, but it runs a lot better than PUBG. So, well, I mean, mm. there's not three thousand players on one map. I think. Could be a no, good it's thing. the same thing. It's a hun- it's a hundred. Oh, is it? On a map. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, wow. Well, if you play Battle Royale, mm-hmm. but uh, it has other game modes. Yeah, PUBG is just Battle Royale. Oh, I did. Yeah, did not know that. What is your Twitch channel? If that thing is, do you still do stream, correct? Mm, I haven't streamed in a couple of months since there's been all the conventions and stuff going. But hmm. uh, Liberté seventeen seventy six. There you go. So you guys can check that out. Might be some videos on there. Yeah, yeah. There, I think there should be. Yeah. Yep. Awkward if there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, we're very happy to have you as a member of the Muddied Waters of Freedom. Thank you. I'm very happy to be on. Yeah. All right. So getting into it. Uh, 
which big news of the week do we want to start with? Do we want to start with the big, big news? Whatever that is, yes. <laughs> the, the massive, <laughs> massive budget and, or deficit enhancing budget bill? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> the big, big news. So, uh, yeah, our, our wonderful, I don't know if people know this, but he's actually a Democrat president. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, he may have run as an R, but dear God, what the living fuck was this budget bill? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah. The, and I read new, I, I read news stories when when it got signed. I guess I was asleep or something when it got signed. Something like, I don't remember what it was, but I remember waking up and seeing uh, Trump signed the uh, omnibus bill after threatening to veto it, and I was like. Well, that doesn't mean anything to me if, if he threatened to veto it. I mean, you either veto it or you don't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he's like, oh, as I'm, opposed to what, you know? Oh, I'm going to veto <laughs> this bill. Oh, never mind. And then he just literally, I think he called up the sharpest chin in the nation, David Hogg, and said, hey, what do I say here? <laughs> and he says, oh, just say never again. Yep. And, yeah. And <laughs> I was going to say on Twitter, he was pretty much just like, this is the last time I'm signing a bill like this. Never again okay. am I going to sign a bill like this. Yeah, and, and the, okay. the silly <laughs> thing is the Trump supporters that are trying to defend him about it. And, and, you know, somebody was correctly saying, like, this bill being signed is showing the differences between, like, the true conservatives and the Trump supporters. So, mm -hmm. um, oh God, what, what, what was I going to say? Um, Jesus Christ. I mean, Allahu Akbar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> dude, if I get raided, I'm going to be so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're saying, oh, well, uh, you know, th he has to go along with it because, there, there were enough votes anyways, and I'm just like, no, that's not how that works, actually, because mm -mm. it would get, I mean, maybe, maybe not, but after he tosses it back, tosses it back to them, it needs uh, the majority of 60%, I think. Yeah, uh, it's two-thirds. Yeah, two-thirds. Two -thirds. Um, yeah. So that's a really silly excuse, even though president. Yeah, and then his hands would have been essentially uh -huh. clean. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, and so you, they got this bill that goes against some of his promises. Which, some? Well, all, all of them. <laughs> yeah. All of the promises. I was Especially the, the wall. Every campaign promise he made just shot right out the window. Yeah. Including the him cutting, you know, the uh, the debt in 10 years yeah. or whatever. Yep. Um, well, he's still got nine more. Yeah, yeah. The Trump, uh, the wall, uh, specifically unfunded, which I thought was pretty <laughs> funny. I'm okay with that, but... And then they, like, use that money to defend the borders of, like, other countries and Yeah, Eastern I saw Europe. that. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Africa. Yeah. Fully, fully, fun fully funded Planned Parenthood. Yeah. Fully funded Planned Parenthood. Increase Just... the budget. Everything about that budget bill is everything opposite of what he ran on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's playing 5D chess, though, you guys. You just don't understand. It's... You know, <laughs> none of us are smart enough to understand what he's really doing. Right, yeah, no, 100%. We must not be. Uh, Steven Crowder said he is playing 31 million, 31 million D underwater backgammon, and none of us can <laughs> possibly understand what he's even thinking. Wait, so was he shitting on him by saying yes. this? Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Kind of like the copy pasta from the Rick and Morty fans. You have to have an IQ of 540 to understand the show. Thank that's you so why, much. That's why he doesn't understand the show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's always that's one of my sticking points with, with the show. Because I, I talked about that a few times now. Every time I fucking see that shit, I'm just like, <laughs> what? I shouldn't have to. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, sorry. We need to dumb down our television for people like you. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I love Rick and Morty. Too bad. It's. I hope it gets picked up by Hulu so they'll actually get far right. more graphic and awful. Oh, yes. Give me, yeah, you know, Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, whatever. I don't care. I, I want somebody to pick it up. I was just talking to my friend, our friend Tucker, about what I really like about the state of Netflix. And I guess Hulu. I didn't know that Hulu did 
much originals. I know they did. Um, yeah. But Netflix is definitely on top of that game when it comes to, like, movies and shows. And when it comes to, like, a television network nixing a, a really good show for some reason, one of these, you know, uh, streaming services can easily come in and save, you know, save, the, save a good show now. They, you don't have yeah. to rely on Fox Entertainment killing Firefly. Right. You know, like, actually, that would be pretty cool. If I mean, bring back Firefly. Yeah, Please bring back Firefly. <laughs> I don't know how you would at this point, but yeah, he, God, that'd be amazing. Yeah, I mean, the cast is too old at this point, I guess. Um, <laughs> Indiana but, Jones is coming back for number five. There is no such thing as too old. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> through that. <laughs> no way. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it starts filming in May of 2019 when he's going to be like 76. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, but back on the budget. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, budget. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, they had what was it? Uh, the bill was two thousand mm -hmm. two hundred something pages. Yeah, it was like two thousand three hundred and twenty-seven pages or something like that. And they yeah. had like a hundred and eleven minutes to read the entire thing. No, no, they had forty-eight minutes, uh, forty-eight hours, but it still wasn't enough. Because yeah, I think Rand got to yeah, like six hundred something. Yeah, God, he that's... did. He did a speed read and he got to like six hundred. That's insane. Yeah, that, yeah, that is absolutely that is wrong on so many levels. Yeah, I don't even want to know what was in the rest of the pages. To be honest, I I feel like yeah, we're slowly gonna find that out. That's gonna come out slowly. It's just like oh, we have to pass the bill to find out what's in it. Right. <laughs> yep, my my favorite line ever said by <laughs> Nancy. Well, yeah, but then Paul Ryan said it. Oh yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. <laughs> and then Paul Ryan followed it up and said the exact same thing, and I was like, "No, Paul, it doesn't work that way." <laughs> well, I mean, it does work that way, just not well. Right. It's not supposed to work that way. No. <laughs> We're supposed to know what's in these bills before you put them out. Yeah. You know what I think would really fix this is if all of the bills that were put forth in Congress had to be handwritten instead of typed. <laughs> I like that. I can see that. Everything would be much shorter. <laughs> Yeah, I remember some, exactly. Yeah, I remember somebody said limit the pages and make it to have a mandatory outline of what's in the damn thing, which I think is pretty cool. Like mandatory outline of what exactly is in this bill, right? Along with the rest yeah. of the actual bill. Um, but yeah, no, he, I just want to torture them. Just demand that it's handwritten in calligraphy with ink and, ink and feather. <laughs> Yep. That'll solve a lot of I our like problems. That. Well, yeah, Rand's uh, read the bill con uh, amendment would be pretty yep. helpful. Yes. Um, less torturous. Less torturous, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, the, the, the Republicans... Well, de So, yeah, definitely Trump made a, a huge mistake by signing the damn thing, but yeah, the Republicans are were the ones passing this damn thing as well, you know? All yeah. of, pretty much all of them except for the the libertarian leaning ones. There and, was a lot of Democrats too. Both of my senators in Washington voted for it. Yeah, uh, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer uh considered it a win. Mhm. Mm but both yeah. of, both of our senators voted for it. Cuz uh well Marco Rubio, he's just going <laughs> to Marco Rubio shows up just enough to know that he's supposed to vote for things or not vote for like he doesn't know what he's not supposed to vote for. He just goes in and he goes, Hey, can I copy <laughs> your answer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, him and Bill Nelson is Bill Nelson. Yeah. The guy needs to retire. But like like we were talking like the since the three of us were talking before the show and the people who listen and watch don't get to see that mm -hmm. part. But we were saying that Trump has gone from like 2000 last year, 17, uh, 2017 Trump was one of the greatest presidents that we've seen to 2018 Trump where he has just shit the bed <laughs> or if he was in Russia, used a prostitute to pee in the bed. <laughs> um, <laughs> not really sure which one, but like the budget bill is awful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this week alone, the budget bill's awful. Yeah, he fired the White House. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think he, he like he's getting Bobby Flay to come in to be the new no, chef. No, no, no. The the firings were good. The new <laughs> hires right. were bad. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. the new hires were worse. I mean, he got rid of the entire White House, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he follows it up by getting fucking John Bolton. Yeah. <laughs> old hair lip Bolton to come in as the new national security advisor. And... He increased the uh, he increased what I call the war budget, the defense spending. He increased the war yeah. budget by three hundred billion dollars, <laughs> and then gets John Bolton in there, and they're going, "We're not going to war." Funny enough, you say that. I was reading an article about like John Bolton being hired, and they said John Bolton, uh, the the Bush era defense hawk. Yeah. I was like, defense hawk. <laughs> yeah, this is a d- defense hawk. No, no. <laughs> that, that's one way to put that. Yeah. I mean, that's called spin. Yep, that's called good spin. And then if only we were actually like defending ourselves instead of aggressing. But yeah, yeah, you know. right. right. Which is, you know, that's one of uh, that was one of like Ron Paul's 2012 Fox interview, I think, where where he said military spending is not defense spending, and he kind of explains the. I want to defend our nation, not, you know, go to war overseas. But, yeah, yeah. The Bolton is not a defense hawk. No. Uh, defense. Mattis is a defense hawk. I would say that, not... Eh. Yeah. That yeah. sounds like a wonderful superhero name, though. <laughs> defense hawk. <Defense. laughs> yeah. <laughs> can we make a comic of that? Yes. Probably. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> I am 100% down. Um, Make it look like John Bolton, please. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's going to happen. He's going to be John Bolton by a hey, defense hawk by night. <laughs> I'm doing this for the city of whatever. Yeah. Fake city name. But then he goes out and he attacks everybody for no reason. <laughs> this is for our defense. But they didn't do anything. <laughs> like the SpongeBob episode where they burned down the whole city to help. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we did it, Patrick. <laughs> we saved the city. <laughs> That's what happens when Antifa goes and does their thing. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was for the greater good. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's it? Well, Rand Paul went, did like a quote unquote live reading of the stuff he was reading, and he tweeted out, uh, like we were saying, money was going to other people's defense. Uh, there, yeah. were, there was also money going towards like scholarships in other countries or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, um, <laughs> it made it absolutely made no sense. <laughs> there was just all type, all uh, and you know, Rand's done this before. Like he has, he always does every year with the Festivus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so like I wasn't seeing obviously anything too new um action like what he was doing wise but I'm glad he did so and I'm glad he's being um an asshole about he's being all randy Yeah, he's being all randy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, check out this picture of David Hogg from the Pro Life March today. Yeah, resist. <laughs> resist. <laughs> oh, is it one with an armband? Please tell me it is. No, no, he's standing at a podium with his, you know, he's doing the resist thing. Yeah. He's sitting there. Glad to know he uh, learned from his mistakes of wearing the armbands. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, however, it does turn out um, I was wrong about what was on the armband. I assumed it was a hammer and a sickle. It is actually just a peace, <laughs> peace sign. sign. Yeah. Right. But it yeah. was in red. I don't know why it was in red. But when I saw the red, I assumed, like, oh, okay, he's mm-hmm. a fucking commie. Because Which he probably is he, still. He, yeah, I mean. So, okay, that's the other thing about this little dickwad. Um, he, goes on, he goes on to every news station that'll have him. And he goes to every event. And he's like, we need to trample the Constitution. We need to get rid of the Constitution. We need the Second Amendment to be gone. People shouldn't own weapons. Blah, blah, blah. And then his school... <laughs> His school instituted... No, that was the old district. Was it the district? Yeah. Well, so yeah. I think it's Miami-Dade is the county uh, that has the district. It's Broward, isn't it? Or Broward, something Broward like county. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so they have to have clear backpacks. And IDs. And IDs. Yeah. To which he incorrectly said this was 
a violation of his First Amendment rights. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, it's not. It's a violation of your Fourth Amendment rights. And <laughs> exactly. You, you should know that yeah. if you're going to start complaining about what rights well, are being Well, no, charged. it could be a little bit of both because you don't get to have self-expression on your backpack. Uh, oh, I'll give you true. that. Yeah. I'll give you that. All right. That's. But he didn't. He obviously didn't think of the more important one, right. which is your right to privacy. Your right so. to privacy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, now they can just look in my backpack, and because that's what he, he was saying. What about girls who are on their menstrual cycle and they don't want people? To, he said this. Right? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. What about girls on their menstrual cycle and they don't want people to know about their feminine products? Fair enough, actually. Yes, That's I, the first I mean, thing yeah, I thought of. I mean, I, yes, but... I, mean, I don't disagree you, you with You asked for that. more government. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, no. And you got more government. Now's not the time. <laughs> right. I don't disagree with that. I, I'm just saying, you wanted more yeah. government, you got it. You got it. Congratulations. <laughs> Did you think that everything was going to work out how you had it envisioned in your head? It doesn't. Oh, yeah, the one student that was like quoted in a news article from CNN said that uh, she didn't think it was fair that they were all being punished for the actions of a yeah. few. Yeah. <sighs> Life really comes at you fast, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Well, since we are, I guess, on the topic of guns now. Yeah. I mean, I, I jumped us right so, there. Yeah. So, I mean, there's nothing really much else to say about this, the budget. The budget, except for oh, it's... Ooh, no, oh, no, I got one. Yeah. Oh. They're spending $12 million on countering state disinformation and pressures. That's us, right? And I, I don't really under... State disinformation. So they're counting their own, countering their own propaganda... I don't Re wait repeat that again since you're looking at says, it okay 12 million for countering state disinformation and pressure uh I don't know maybe maybe state disinformation just means disinformation about the state I don't know because then it also lists 20 million for countering foreign state propaganda oh okay never mind so I feel like that's, that's us. yeah so I don't really I want well foreign would be like Russian well, yeah, you know, we're, obviously. we're Russians. Obviously, yeah. No, we're yeah obviously. obviously, when you think of countering foreign propaganda, it's got to be Russia. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, it can only be Russia. It can't be anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I'm looking at Rand Paul's tweets right now. Oh. <laughs> uh, so many good ones. Mm -hmm. 10 yeah. million for disadvantaged Egyptian students. Hey, my peoples. Looking at you. I was going to say, <laughs> are you getting 10 million? I hope so. <laughs> if you're getting 10 million, we're like, you pay me back. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so there's 15 million in developmental assistance to China. But, like, have you guys seen the videos of, like, China's, like, uh, like they, like, built cities for people to move in so they can bring them out from, like, the rural areas, but yeah. nobody's moving into them. So they just have, like, giant ghost cities. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, I remember reading about those. A uh, uh, part of that reason too is you know, that's um, what do you call it? It's that problem. Who was it that talked about it? It was Mises, I think. The calculation problem of like mm -hmm. state planning, um, mm -hmm. and it, it, it was a Chinese corporation that they were doing this through, and the company ended up failing after mm -hmm. they. And they had already built the city, like massive city. Yeah. Um, oh, good thing we're throwing 15 million more into that. Which is funny, considering like China is screwing us. This is the worst deal ever, and <laughs> and he's paying them like for their own development. When you think that money should go here, if America first, that's what Trump's all about, and now he's funding them. Right. He's funding everywhere. Yeah. Well, of course. Right. Yeah. But don't yeah. worry, never again. That's what we do. Yeah. Hashtag never again. What? I don't understand how some of this stuff could even get into our like, budget. Like, which committee is putting those in and which Congress people are putting those in yeah. and why? Like, disadvantaged Egyptian students. What does that have to do with anybody in the United States? Yeah. That's the confusing part to me. But writing a bill is complex. Nothing we're going to go into right now. Yeah. Well, credit where credit's due, though. They are not going to be spending any money to prevent state medical marijuana initiatives, so screw you, Jeff Sessions. 
Well, that's you good. ain't getting no funding. One one thing that they did correctly in this budget bill. <laughs> At least we get that. <laughs> right. At least the places that have state medical marijuana. Un- <laughs> get like, to keep it. Yeah, Florida has it, kinda, sorta, not yeah. really. Like, but like for the oh sta- yeah. Yeah, I live in a state with recreational marijuana. Yep. You do. <laughs> it's speaking, wonderful. Speaking of, we're going to be moving the show to Washington. I um, live uh, across the street from a pot shop. It is fantastic. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to Washington. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that the other day. It's so gloomy. It's rainy all the time. There are homeless people littered everywhere. Depends on where in Washington. The only good it's thing about it's snowing right now where I am. It's so pretty. <laughs> It's 73 degrees. Yeah, it's not here. <laughs> the, the, the only good thing about Washington, aside from the editor-in-chief, is they have, uh, whatchamacallit, they have uh, those bikini uh, coffee. The bikini shops? Yeah. yeah. Well, they're lingerie shops, but yeah. I have never well, we experienced both. that, and I want to. <laughs> Topless Tuesdays and Thursdays. See? Yeah. <laughs> have you ever heard about that? I'm moving to Washington. Yeah, I've heard, I've known about yeah. that thing for years. And... I've, I've known yeah. about it. I we thought... do. We have a lot of them. Yeah. Well, why just... Why is that? Why Why is that a Washington thing? Uh, uh, I'm guessing it has to do because we have like lax regulations on entertainment industries. Huh. So like. Well, good for Washington. I don't, I don't know. I don't know exactly. They They've been trying. Well, by they, I mean soccer moms, have been trying to shut it down for a few years, saying that it's like against health code to have naked people serving food. But so far, it hasn't happened yet. They're pretty great, though. Not going to lie. Well, Just, it depends yeah. on where you go. Some of them are really great, and some of them I don't want them to give me coffee. How much How there. much is a cup of coffee from one of those places? Um, For me, I get a discount because I'm a lady. Uh, they give <laughs> me like a dollar off. But... Uh, I think they're like a maybe seventy five cents more uh, than a regular coffee shop, but then okay. like got a tip. Yeah, now. yeah, tipping. Okay, right. so yeah, they make a lot of the money from tipping. Gotcha. Yeah, I have one of my friends works at one of them, and she makes like, God, <laughs> mind you, she's very pretty, but she makes like probably six hundred dollars in tips a week. That's not bad at all. No, that's not bad at all. Yeah, nah. for working at a coffee shop. Yeah. yeah, and plus in Washington, servers get paid full minimum wage plus tips. Okay. So. Ouch. So I know. Okay, so I know in Seattle it's fifteen bucks. What is it? Where in Washington are you? Spoken, uh, I'm in Spokane, right? Spokane, so I'm like really close to Idaho. Yeah, I yeah. I flew into Spokane once. What, Love it. Yeah, it's a great little city. I went to Coeur d'Alene. Great city. Ooh, they have a really nice beach. They do have a really nice beach. Oh, that's where you guys all went to see um, that one house from that one movie, right? No, that was when we went to Portland. Oh, uh, Portland. Oops. Yeah, and then we went to uh, Astoria to see the Goonies house. Yes. Uh, no, I went to Coeur d'Alene for my buddy Casey Reese's wedding. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I walked around Coeur d'Alene a lot because I didn't know anybody. I went to a lot of coffee shops. And then I visited my very first pot shop when I crossed over the border back into Spokane. And <laughs> I spent way too much money there. I actually visited three in one day just to see the different products, and I spent a lot of money at each of them. Yeah, I bet. And then I got the one across. Oh, go ahead. And then I got really worried flying, (laughs) and then I was like, whatever. The one across the street from me, it's like set up like a candy shop, like everything's super colorful and (laughs) just like, oh, that's pretty great. Um, I imagine you were going to ask about the minimum wage. Oh yeah, what was what's the minimum wage in Spokane? Uh, so right now it is eleven fifty, and then uh, twenty twenty it goes up to thirteen fifty. Yeah. Wow. Plus six hundred and tips. And has it? It's been hurting the local community. I know it has been in Seattle. Yeah, Seattle's seen it a lot more. Um, I don't know. I think it's going to be kind of more of like a. A long-term effect because people are trying to move here to get the higher wages so we have like an influx of people but I imagine once the influx of people kind of goes down it's going to stagnate but local businesses definitely feel it a lot worse yeah. um I think most of it's really over in Seattle though than the east side the east side's pretty nice although we have been seeing really high um 
like our cost of living is going up really quickly. I mean, yeah. it's not terrible yet. Like it's well, still pretty affordable, but I think yeah. my rent's gone up like 300 bucks in like two years. Jesus. Well, that's going to happen when there's more money going around. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, yeah. And they have to pay people more money to yeah. take care of the properties. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at some of our grocery stores, we've had like signs posted that they're like apologizing for having to raise prices on like dairy and stuff like that. But yeah. it hasn't gotten too really terrible yet. That, but I'm really sorry that you voted for this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I'm really sorry that your decisions led to me having to do this. Yeah. That's so, that's so it's kind of like, a, man, uh, that article about uh, people moving from California. Oh, yeah, they're leaving. Cal so my parents are in Virginia, as you know, mm -hmm. and you may know. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, my parents are in Virginia and uh, people from like New York and Vermont and Connecticut have been leaving like New York, I think, for the seventh year in a row is the mo most evacuated state. Yes. Yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. I, it's actually longer than seven. Yeah. I, I just threw out seven because I knew, I knew it was longer than five. Yeah. <laughs> um, but. They're all moving down south, you know. They're going down, and mm -hmm. they're slowly taking over Virginia, North Carolina, those places. They're already t t taken over here. Right. That's they're... why, like three or four years ago, might be like four years ago, we surpassed New York in population. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was really, it wasn't uh, what do you call it? Um, it wasn't like a generic growth of Florida people. It was literally New Yorkers leaving and coming here. Yeah, right. Um, but now they're starting to vote in Virginia the way that they did in New York because they didn't learn their lesson. Yeah. And no, they never do. No. And my, my dad is a cantankerous old Republican. Yeah. Uh, I love him. Great guy. But, uh, you know, he's like, these New Yorkers are coming down and they just don't learn. And now my taxes are going up. <laughs> and I'm like, yep. Makes sense. Dad. Yeah. I've seen people complaining about the Cal exit pretty much and how they're going over to Texas similarly. Yeah. Same thing happening. Places are, you know. Uh, I honestly, in my political communications class, we were doing analysis on like red states, blue states, right, purple states. And we're kind of like placing bets on when we think that Texas is going to turn into a swing state because mm -hmm. of all the people leaving from California. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, My guess is in the next 10 years. But I hope, no, I hope not. We can't lose Texas. Texas. <laughs> can you imagine Texas as a swing state? I cannot, campaigning, man. Yeah. Man, cause campaigning through Texas would be awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you drive for 10 hours and you're still in Texas. <laughs> right. You would have to spend so much time in, like, because Texas is like in seven different states as it is. Yeah. And you just have to spend so much time there, and it's going to be nine thousand degrees mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. day. Yeah, you're going to run out of gas on I-10. It's just like it's going to be awful. Yeah, still a nice state. I, I love mean, Texas. Yeah, I love. I'm Texas. slightly disappointed. I never got to live in Washington when it was a red state. When was it that? It flipped when I was born. Oh. Ninety five. So it's your fault. Yep, it's all my fault. Damn millennials. Right. But I mean, you, <laughs> you damn millennials. Um, but yeah, you're going to become part of Liberty though, right? Oh yeah. Well, no, they've been arguing this ever since I was born pretty much like Eastern Washington hates Western Washington. And the last one that I saw, they were going to call our side of the state Lincoln. <sighs> I would move. But why? Would, <laughs> I don't understand. Why, why would the Western side care? It's the Eastern side that wants to secede. Why doesn't it just stay Washington and let the eastern side do whatever it's doing? Well, so, like, the eastern side obviously needs the western side because of the ports. Yeah, And yeah. then the western side really needs our agriculture. Well, yeah, I get that, but you don't have to be in one union to no. trade. I mean, that's what people are saying about Brexit. Like, oh, no, if, uh, <coughs> excuse me. If Britain, uh, you know, if Britain leaves the uh, European Union then they they think that trade won't happen somehow. Yeah. Right. And just like, Somehow why? it's all just going to stop. Yeah, I, I, I never understood that argument from people that are like against Brexit and secession in general. I'm just like, why? I don't get this. Uh, you have to be part of a union or association for there to be trade. You don't have to. I mean, that's what happens everywhere, you know? 
not everybody is part of the same goddamn thing uh, to trade. You don't have to. We're not. Shit, tr China, right, is our biggest partner. We're not in any in in union with them. Yes. Right. Um, but, no, I mean, I get what you're saying. It's just... It's, no. Yeah, I, I personally don't care. I just hope they pick a better name than Lincoln. Yeah. Because Washington and Lincoln is just not... Mm, mm -mm. You wouldn't nope. move east if it's the seeds? I mean, I am east. Oh, I would probably yeah, jump over to Idaho. Mm, well, I don't know about that. They have state tax. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna yeah. say. Are you sure? Well, no. I'll probably stay in Eastern Washington then, because the West Side will en enact an income tax almost immediately. So. Oh, of course, right. So you'd be. Well, living... they kind of have in Seattle, actually. Yeah, I was gonna say. So you'd be living in Lincoln. God, I don't want to live in Lincoln. <laughs> I would make it my own like personal vendetta to change the name. That was that would be my lifelong goal, honestly. I support but they come up with so many names. Okay. Yeah. So is this why I'm confused? Lincoln would is the eastern, the yeah. new one. Yes. Oh, that's, and Washington that's... would stay on the west. Ah, that's yeah, it'd why. Yeah, still I was be confused. Seattle, Washington, but it'd yeah. be Spokane, Lincoln. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> God, that just makes my heart hurt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Can we like pick like Jefferson or like something better than I Lincoln? Like, I like Jefferson. Totally down with Jefferson. Always a fan of calling someplace Mason. Because George Mason was the man. Yeah. Knowing the people on the east side, we'd probably be named after Reagan. That's okay. I mean... It's not the worst. I mean, it's no, not it's the not, best. It's, it's not. Great. There's better. <laughs> There's that, that, obviously better. <laughs> better than Lincoln. <laughs> Definitely oh. better than Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the rights trampling president of Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Um, <laughs> murder. No, thanks. All, all of our listeners who are like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> <laughs> yep, notifications no, coming in on Facebook. No, I don't want to argue about this again. <laughs> We're never watching that guy's show again. He's an <laughs> asshole. He doesn't like Lincoln. Yeah, um, I was that asshole in college. Yeah. My dad I, yeah. still thinks I'm an asshole because of that. Because uh, Lincoln was yeah, a I mean, we might be. He kept this nation together. Oh, my God. <laughs> I took the Tom DiLorenzo stance on Lincoln. I hate Lincoln. I dislike yeah. Lincoln. Dislike Although, him. gotta hand it to him. He pretty much did start the whole Republican, it's for national security thing. Well, yeah, yeah. So, it's for I the mean. good of the nation. We need to keep the nation together. We could have won. The South could have won, man. Five years. Five years with a smaller country, land wise. Uh, population-wise, weaker Navy, and we kicked ass for a long time, but, I mean, like, the fucking Union, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back on yeah, back. topic, which we kind of have been, I guess, sort of. Um, guns, uh, they are also, right now, um, it's happening in, I'm sure there, it might be happening where you're at, Taylor, but... Here in St. Petersburg uh, and in Tampa, and the, pro -life march. the rest, of <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah, the, there's a pro-life march going on called the March for Our Lives. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so the March for Our Lives is going on, and uh, the sharpest chin in America is out there, raising his fist as he does, <laughs> wearing his armband, going on about trampling the Constitution while saying you can't trample on other parts of the Constitution. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just a bunch of people going around being like, hey, we need to get rid of the guns. We've yeah. had enough. Yeah. Security is more important than freedom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Where was that from? Uh, uh, oh, it's a, it was a oh, yeah, sign, it was, right? it was on one of the banners that people were holding at the march. Security is more important than freedom, which is odd because there's this quote that I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes to give up. <laughs> freedom for security deserve neither yep uh that was andrew jackson <laughs> <laughs> nope i'm just i don't like him andrew jackson some people might assume that i do but i don't it's weird <laughs> you seem like somebody that would like andrew jackson right, i mean i am the biggest nazi on this show so. that's true 100 percent. yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Jackson has one of the most badass stories, though. Like, you, well, yeah. you get rid of Trail of Tears, 
That dude was just hardcore. Yeah. yeah. He beat yeah. a would-be assassin with a cane. <laughs> like, no other president would do that nowadays. Mm-hmm. Yep. The guy just I looked- did my uh, my third grade essay on Andrew Jackson and his wonderful life. <laughs> my teacher probably, like, thinking back, my teacher probably thought I was, like, a very disturbed child. Probably. Not probably. making any arguments, though. I probably was. But... Yeah. <laughs> If if you wrote that paper today, she would have had you arrested as a possible school shooter. <laughs> uh, expelled. <laughs> right. Yep. She Endangering likes... the other students with my opinions. I mean, he, he broke down the banks. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. I mean, and he beat a would-be assassin with a cane. Yep. Take away Trail of Tears. Great president. Yeah. Put Trail of Tears in. One of the worst. Yep. Exactly. But yeah, no, nah, like, he, he was a badass no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um... But yeah, I disagree with him on so many issues. Oh, of course. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so they're having this march, right? And they, I know nothing. There about are so this many. I don't care about no, it. no. We talked. We talked about this. this I mean, is, a it's bit. just they're they just think of the gun control arguments. That's what they're out there for, right. you know. And they want, you know, they want to reduce gun ownership, legal gun ownership. And, you know, my thing is, if you want to, and even though I still disagree with you on this, if you want to get rid of guns, you have to, in my opinion, pass a constitutional amendment to get rid of, to basically veto the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. That is, if you want to do that, go, go about it the right way. Because, yeah. right, yeah, because, I, I mean, still, I would disagree with them about it, but they're going about it through, you know, um, executive branch and state, uh, county, city laws, you know, and the way things are right now when it comes to firearm ownership are all unconstitutional with how it limits everything so hard, so, so much. Because the Second Amendment is very clear on its intent and what it's there for. If you want to get rid of the guns, do it the right way, you know. And if I want, if I, I'll leave if I have to, you know. Like, fine, you did it the right way. I can, I'll go somewhere else if that's the case. Um, so, I, okay, so this actually got brought up before. It's like if you do a, a constitutional convention, a convention of the states in order to change the constitution. And yeah, but uh, you also don't need to do that just to pass a constitutional amendment. I'm just throwing that true, in. True, but you're not going to be. If you want to change it, you're like you're not going to be. You're not going to get. Some, you're not going to get a constitutional amendment passed to do that. You're going to need a convention of the states. There, there's no way you're getting three, uh, two thirds of the Congress to pass that. Well, I know, I know, right. but you still you need that st- you need more than that to get a convention going anyway and when you do and when you do a constitutional convention which is why some conservatives are against the convention is uh it everything's on the table it, everything's Everything, on the table right that's what i was going to say yeah. it's like but every amendment past the 10th you know did not need a convention um yeah, but none of them were trying to change an old amendment. Yeah, yeah. Except for, you know. Well, the, no, the prohibition. Right, yeah, except for yeah, that one. Exactly. Which yeah. was added after the, te- like, they put that one in and they went, oh, no, we fucked up. Yeah. But, you know, that's that's my opinion on it. Do it the right way and let, you know, and then I'll decide if I want to stay in this country or leave. Right. But right now, the Second Amendment is there to restrain the government from messing with our ability to own firearms. Yes. Which some of these idiots are just not bump stuff. They think like, you know, <laughs> the second amendment gives us the right uh to own firearms and that's not how that works. Because yeah, yeah the 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 10 amendments, well, not the 10 amendments as in the bill of rights. The rights we have through the protection of the bill of the bill of rights uh are from the philosophy of natural law so basically these rights exist no matter what kind of law is there right. and the only thing the amendments do is restrain the government from doing anything right the amendments restrict the government's right to take away yeah our stuff yeah yeah 
Um, but yeah, it was not to be a limitation on us. Right. Exactly. It's a limitation on the government. Yeah. So they need to do it the right way if they want to. Um, and I think, fine, have your march, but don't try to take away the guns. And, you know, one of my liberal friends was telling me, like, what do you guys think that we're, we want to come and take away your guns? You know, it, we're just talking about assault rifles. Uh, or one person even said, we're just talking about AR-15s. But what I saw from some of these bills and and uh policies being pushed is assault rifle is an umbrella term that covers much more than the ar-15 um oh yeah yeah Yeah. and then last show we talked about the some of those gun statistics i had posted and one of them was uh through the fbi um all firearms only comp comprise three percent of shootings um so even then i don't i don't fucking understand who they're trying to fool three no. percent yeah shootings. really i mean it's mostly handguns yeah and also I, the people who say like oh we should ban semi-auto weapons hey, hey, i'm like did you say 3% do you really know all firearms per make up three percent of shootings no, no, rifles. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what you said, but I think you meant. Oh, all my bad. Okay, I was assault, like, wait, assault what? rifles. Oops. Yeah. I was like, no, that's not possible. Yeah, yeah. It's a hundred percent of the make yeah, up. A hundred percent of them. Yeah, uh, three percent. The rest of it's handguns. Exactly. Which, yeah. you know, again, not saying then we should instead ban the handguns. Handguns, <laughs> right, but. No. handguns but I mean, most people who are like try to be like centrist on the issue say, no, no, we should be able to keep our handguns. Right. Like. Yeah, that's not pe- I, that's I, not what's killing everybody. I can res- you know, I can respect people trying to still maintain some respect for the Second Amendment. Uh, yeah. I, I can respect that. Uh, in my opinion, that's just uh, them being uneducated and misinformed about what would happen. You know, if you ban rifles, for example, that it's not yeah. gonna that it's not gonna fix the problem. What you need is a five-gallon bucket of rocks in every classroom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that, Taylor? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, she, she was the one that mentioned it. So. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> in Pennsylvania. Oh. Leave it to a I, Pennsylvania to bring a rock joke, to a gunfight. At first I thought it was a joke, and then fight. I was like, God, this is the year that like satire becomes reality. Yes. Just like I couldn't even tell the difference. Leave it to a Philadelphian to bring a rock to a gunfight. I was like really looking at the source and I was like thinking it was going to be like the onion or I was like, what is it? Babylon? What is it called? Yeah. Bab- There's uh, another Babylon, one. Babylon B. Yeah. And I was like, oh no, New York Times. Yep. yep. Right. hundred percent real. Yep. Five and gallon buckets of rocks. Yeah. One of the comments I saw on one of the pages too was, I'd rather they do that than give the teachers guns. What the fuck? What, what are you going to do with a rock? <laughs> I well, know. I mean... It, in the premise that you could actually do some serious damage with rocks, I do think that these kids should get mm, 43 hours of training, let's say, on how to use these assault rocks before they're <laughs> able to actually use them. And then we they... can, you know, like reenact uh, the Battle of Kinney, pretty big battle between uh, I mean, uh, Hannibal and uh, Rome. <laughs> But I was gonna do like give him da- slings. I was gonna, you know? yeah, I was gonna say a David and Goliath kind of. Yeah, thing. That, that's where I was right, going. Right, right, give, right. give him slings. <laughs> oh my god! No, no, no! There was a comment that made me laugh. It was like uh, it was about the David and Goliath battle or whatever, and somebody was just like, "Well, that would make sense." But I mean, I'm sure if David had an AR-15, he would have used it. <laughs> like... <laughs> that's true. One hundred percent, David would have used it. Don't oh, man, think that, he would have stuck with a rock. That dude is huge. <laughs> yeah. Bang. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, school school districts have gotten absolutely insane with this. Yeah. With, with their gun policies and rock policies. Uh, arming people with rocks is just idiotic. Yeah. But, you know, whatever, I guess. Uh, Especially the students. Right. Well, yeah. all of these, the Parkland shooting was kind of like an eye opener to me because the school district where I grew up, we did have armed resource officers, like always, like I never went to a school without mm-hmm. armed resource officers. Yeah. yeah. So like to hear that other 
schools don't have those was kind of weird for me. Like yeah. I thought that was just a thing. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Same here. But, yeah. But uh, the community where I grew up, we had the Frontier Middle School shooting, I think, in 94. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, we've had armed security. So. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Um, uh, Michael Mackay, uh, my friend, he's a, a Manatee County Sheriff. Um, he, as usual, he's trying to get me to become a law enforcement officer. Um, oh, good. You can be one of them. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people don't know. It, but my, uh, I'm... Two of my best friends are law enforcement officers. Both of them keep trying to make me get me to become a law enforcement officer. No, <laughs> knowing I'm a libertarian, one of them even watches the show. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's watching right now. Oh, is he? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and yeah, he, so he was, he was telling me, obviously, again, like two days ago, like, hey, Mo, you know, uh, Manatee uh, is hiring uh, 24 new officers because they're actually – what, so, yeah, I didn't know their county. So my county has, as far as I remember, ever since we moved back to this country, we've had school resource officers everywhere. In Manatee County, they don't. I didn't know that was a thing. So they're actually yeah. hiring a bunch of people now in Manatee because they're going to be putting uh, an SRO in every single school there again. Or, to be, you know, they're going to start putting them there. Um, so, yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. And I think that's a good start, you know, Uh start putting school resources resource officers there um i mean the, there was that shooting in maryland uh saint mary county yeah <laughs> where the officer was able to stop the shooter after he injured two students yeah, yeah he st he stopped it from becoming a mass shooting yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know it, you know good guy with a gun versus back you know yeah a good guy with a gun stops a bad guy with a gun yeah which is the argument yeah. that we constantly made yeah yeah but and people ignore people are ignoring the maryland school shooting oh, like, yeah, oh no yeah. that's that's a one-off that, i'm surprised it even made the news because it's stories like that usually don't make the news well you well you they hear, happen you hear school shooting and it's like oh there was a school shooting and yeah. then all of a sudden it was like oh wait but a sro yeah uh stopped him yeah <laughs> and it was like oh uh, well never mind do you own any firearms mm, no good um i grew up around them because uh, I lived in the country, but I, uh, it's too much of a liability in an apartment complex. That's a good answer. On so. we don't want the NSA or the FBI. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you actually are. You do. You're just not telling us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say whether or not I'm armed or unarmed. Good. I'll put it that way. There you go. <laughs> um, and you know, like just now at the at the Kava Bar when we were picking up our drinks, you know, one of my friends had brought up. Uh, that article I shared about um, the different countries and how many steps they have. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw and, that. And there oh, was, Japan's like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was just one of them. It, yeah, it yeah, mentions yeah. a bunch of them, um, which is funny because on the Russia statistic, there's it's like 14 steps, and it's like one third of all guns in the country are illegal. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But you know, he, my this friend, this friend of mine was telling me how he thinks that's a good idea to have all those steps or whatever. One of my one of my li liberal friends, you know, and you know, I explained to him. I was like, "How?" Um, one of the other statistics that that we talked about last week on the show was um, uh, one half of weapons used in ma in mass shootings are obtained legally, and. 25% are obtained illegally and the other 25% about are um, unknown. They don't know how, how they got the weapons or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But a good portion of them basically ha are obtained illegally. And this depends on the state um, mm -hmm. and the rules they have for the firearm. So it doesn't matter if you limit the legality of getting a firearm if you're if, if they're going to go around the thing the the firearm law to get the firearms that they want um yeah so like i don't agree and i don't understand the thought logic of wanting more steps like in florida rick scott and we talked about this one too. He just passed uh, a great Democratic governor, Rick. Scott. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh oh, yeah. yeah. You know, that. he raised the age limit. Which, and I'm just, okay, and I'm and just the, like the age limit thing is so stupid because in the last ten years of all the mass shooters, 
two of them were people under the age of 21. Yeah. Two of them were under the age of 21. Yeah, yeah. One of them got the guns illegally. Yeah. So, yeah, granted, this one kid, Cruz, right, Cruz? Yes. Yeah, Cruz, he, yeah. Got, he got his gun legally and he was under 21. But the Maryland shooter that we were just talking about, 17 years old, in the state of Maryland, you need to be 21. Right. Right. That's what, yeah, but like, and he wasn't a man. How do you stop that? How right. do you, it, he already had illegal, an illegal firearm. <laughs> how, 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 what do you do? How, how do you ban it more? You know, what was it? Was it Virginia? One of the places was talking about uh, raising it to twenty-one and confiscating the guns, or that was, making uh, them uh, no, turn no, their uh, Illinois gun ownership I was just say over. It's a midwestern state. It's Illinois. Yeah, Illinois. Got Il- it. Illinois. You have to be twenty-one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Shocker. Um, uh, that's shaker. But yeah, then they were saying that you're you're gonna have like six months to turn over your gun ownership to either somebody who's over the age of twenty one or turn it in. Yeah, right. something like, like that. Or we're gonna come mm. and take them. But they're not coming to take your weapons. No, no that's, that's absolutely not. not. Yeah. Where would we ever get that idea? No. It, the thing too about the the age limit being like how big Florida is and how we have some good schools here. A lot of people, a lot of people come in from out of state. Um, and uh, it doesn't even have to be a school thing, but young women, um, firearms are the best equalizer when it comes to defending yourself, especially, I mean, right. mo- whether you're a woman or a small built man, you know, that, that can't defend himself against a bigger man, um, or a woman from a rapist or whatever, you know, a gun. Or anybody with a gun. Yeah, yeah. A gun is a gun, <laughs> no matter what size you are, big or small. But it's a good yeah. deterrent, and it works. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You know, they're gonna fall the same. And now yeah. all these uh, young women will not be able to legally protect themselves uh, with firearms because of this yeah. law. And I don't know how people. Again, it's just the whole libertarian thing. I don't know how people think this is yeah. logical. Right. Like, I definitely think that if I lived alone, I would feel a lot less secure, you know, yeah. without a gun. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, I even it, within the uh, the Kava community here where we have a lot of leftists, uh, a lot of the because we're in Florida. A lot of the females I know are not anti guns and will and, and and do buy or plan to buy a gun because of you know, uh, stalkers and people from their past. Right. And I'm like, yes, makes sense. Please As buy they, a gun. Right. Protect yourself. Yeah. Protect yourself yeah. to the best of your ability. Yeah. Yeah. So like, imagine them not being able to buy those guns anymore. Right. Well, not imagine. It's a reality. now. It, I mean, it is. Yeah. Like, I don't know how old you Sadly. are. Sadly. I have no idea how old you are. Nor do I, does it matter. But like, if you're under the age of 21 and you can't purchase a weapon, like, does that... You can't defend yourself if somebody breaks into your house. Like that makes no sense to me. That yeah, essentially I, they're forcing you to live at home longer. Well, I don't really get. I don't even really get this whole like infatuation with making everything like twenty one is the standard, but <laughs> yeah. like making us like legal adults at eighteen, and then even trying some of us as adults under the age of eighteen just because they can. Like yep, I don't. Yep. Right. I don't like why are we making this such like a clear line thing and why do we keep raising it? Right. We can we can try you as an adult at sometimes as young as 13, which I've yeah. seen. You can yeah. vote and join the like military. Like the stabbing chick, whatever, the right. little girl who little like girl. stabbed her friend. Yeah. Um, you can vote and join the military and smoke cigarettes at 18. You definitely mm, are smoking de- cigarettes only in some states. You can do That's be true. That's mm-hmm. true. That's been not changed. California, not California and Hawaii and Hawaii. Um, you can, uh, vote, you can definitely be charged as an adult in everything. They're not going to charge you as a minor unless. Yeah, certainly not. That's for, based on personal experience. Yep. They will not charge you as a minor. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how retarded you act. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, but. Some of my friends should really be charged as minors for half of the things I do. Right. <laughs> I feel as though most of the things I got charged with, I should have been charged as a minor. Um, <laughs> Even though I was definitely well over legal age, but you can't you can't drink, you can't buy a firearm. Like if you are making the decisions to join the military and who is leading this country, you should be able to do everything else. 
everything. At the up. very least, they should switch the draft age. All right, like I, at the very least, if they're gonna play this game. Yeah. Right. I can agree with that. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I think that my like so. I, I know I've said this on the show before, but my dad thinks that the voting age should be twenty-five. Oh my god. <laughs> and I said I, I'm okay with that because I'm over twenty-five. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> but, uh, but only if you raise the age that you can join the military to 25. Yeah. And he said, no, nobody would do it. And I'm like, right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's they, correct. That's right. And he's like, but no, <laughs> like, we need people to join the military. Right. But they should be in charge of who their boss is. Yeah. Makes sense. Right. They should be able to and have the a say. In they it. have to follow. Right. It, well, no, they don't have to. They don't have to join the military. They don't have to vote either. There is no law mandating people to show up on the first Tuesday of November unless the first Tuesday of thank November God. is November 1st. Yeah, th- yeah. Thank right. God. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, like, God. Wait, you guys have to go into polling stations, huh? Uh, yes. <laughs> In Washington, we don't. So how do you vote? Mail. Every- oh, everybody? Mm-hmm. There's no polling stations there? Mm, only for like the homeless people. Wow, that sounds like it clogs up your mailing system during that period. I've never had to go to a polling station. That's could true. you just go around and steal people's ballots out of their mailboxes? You could, <laughs> but then you'd like go to prison for yeah. like thirty years. Only if you're caught. That's true. Or if you're not not over eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> so you could vote Wait, at sixteen. Isn't there some other? Isn't there some other kind of penalty for voting underage? I don't know. Because it's a federal crime. I don't know. If but you, anyways. Unless you're a Democrat. Right. I mean, dead people vote all the time. That's true. I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. <laughs> if you're past expiration like, or before 18, same same penalty. I don't know. Voting voting via the mail is so nice because then I can sit there and like look at my ballot for like an hour. Oh yeah. Before I, decide yeah. I mean, we can't. We no, can I'm, vote. I'm, by I'm mail. honest. Yeah, yeah. We do have that. Uh, we have early ballots and yeah. There's another one. Too. We can vote. Yeah, we can Definitely. vote by mail. Yeah, it's but, absentee ballots. Yeah. Absentee, yes. Yeah. yeah, but we can vote by mail. But I, I'm not gonna lie. I enjoy the process of going down there and punching my card. Yeah, yeah. It depend. Honestly, it depends on the person. I think here in Florida, a lot of times it's the very young and the very old that yeah. vote by mail, and everybody in the middle goes to the to the uh, polling station. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I I like I showing up there and causing I think, problems. I think that like usually there's only like one polling place per county or not per county per district now yeah. uh, here in Washington, and it's only because of like I mean really if you really wanted to go and you could, um, but it's mostly for like the homelessness population, so they have somewhere to go vote because they don't have addresses. Um, but yeah, no, everything's like mail in, and it's so vote? nice. I don't say I'm okay with that, like. Yeah, I'm okay. Our that voter save... turnout's really high. Well, yeah, and that would save well, yeah, a lot sense. of money, too. I mean, to an extent. <clears throat> no. Well, you're clogging up the mail system, sure, but you you don't need the hundreds of people to... Those are all volunteers, though. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, you're right, because I remember checking. Yeah, those are all volunteers. Yeah, yeah. So it's not really... I mean, it's costing them money because it's time. Yeah, true but, that. Yeah, it's not costing the state or anything. I like going there because they have like all these stupid rules and it's like, you can't wear any campaign stuff while you're there. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, bet. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to wear campaign stuff and vote and you're not even going to realize I'm doing it. Like, uh, the main downside to it really is like if you're doing like campaign management, because then it's so tough to like, you know, do like the last two weeks push because like 30 percent of the people have already like sent in their ballots. So there's not really yeah. much you can do. And then also you can't. I mean, people say that you can't, like, campaign in front of, like, polling stations, but, like, if you stand out there and shake somebody's hand and introduce yourself before they, like, go in there, they're going to vote for you because they're too stupid to figure out otherwise. Right. <laughs> so it also cuts back on that well, option, too. I think you have well, to there's be, some downsides. I think you have to be 100 yards from a polling station. That's right. So Here, yeah. Yeah, here, anyway. You have to be 100 yards from a polling station because when I was working on some campaigns, we they they had cones and it's like this is where you can stand if you're campaigning, mm-hmm. and yeah. we, we would stand there and we would just sit there and talk to people as they were walking in. And yeah, it's like, exactly. hey, do you not like Republicans or Democrats? Vote for this guy. Yeah, because he's not yeah. either. 
But, yeah, I mean, it makes campaigning kind of crappy here, but voting's really nice. I mean, it kind of gives you the last two weeks off. Yeah, in a way. <laughs> That's not really great when you're campaigning. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's kind of the important part. That's but if stressful as all hell. But if you're, like, talking to people, and they're like, I already voted, sorry, and you're like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so is there, like, a deadline you have to mail it out by? Yeah, it's like uh, uh, it has to be... I mean, like obviously. it's like the same time the polling locations close. It has to be at the post office. Oh, so they may not know like who that. wins for like four days afterwards. Sometimes. Yeah, it depends on how close it is. But usually uh, around like election season, they like kind of like work double time. So I think it's usually within like 24 hours. Um, All of the ballots should be in from the last day. But you have like you get them like a month ahead of time. So you have like a solid month to like send it in. And only idiots like me wait until the very last day. <laughs> so you you like to be thorough. That's that's how I see that. It was such a tough election. I like honestly, I stared at my ballot for a solid two hours with some coffee and was like, Gary Johnson, Donald Trump, Gary Johnson, Donald Trump. And I was like, oh, what do I do? Like, I kind of want to just be like, Fuck you, Donald Trump. And then I was like, no, but then I'll regret that. And I know I will. So I, mean, I eventually picked Gary Johnson. But, hey, yeah, there's nice. people like me who wanted to wait until the very last minute to see how bad Donald Trump could, fi like, fuck everything up, which he did. So. Right. Well, uh, I mean, that first year I was like, man, like we said, you know, that first year I was like, man, he's, he's yeah. he is not doing, he is, he's not doing too shabby. And yeah. then in less than three months into his second year, <laughs> he like, just nuked doing? the ever-living shit out of his presidency. <laughs> yeah. It makes me not yeah. regret my Mark Rubio vote in the primary. <laughs> you voted yeah. Rubio? <laughs> yeah. And there, it was only Rubio and Cruz. By the yeah, time the, the primary. I yeah. By the time the Randy. Florida primary happened, it was just those two. And what, it's Kasich. everybody... Oh, and Kasich, but no, he wasn't going to win Florida. It was going to be Rubio. Rubio or Cruz. Yeah. And then f some fucking cow god Cruz did better than Rubio in Florida. Yeah. And I was like, well, what? That's because Rubio has been in Florida for so long. Everybody was like, this guy is a joke. Yeah. Or they're just like, he doesn't show up. Yep. He yeah. sweats. <laughs> he sweats a lot. Yeah. He no, constantly. I just wrote in Rand in the primaries. I was so depressed. <laughs> After he dropped out, I'm not even kidding. I took a week off of school and ate ice cream like a little snowflake. That's what I did. <laughs> that was really, I was really sad. Really, really. It was real really painful. Sad. I had just gotten back from Iowa, and I was like, "Are you effing kidding me?" <laughs> oh, did you? Uh, were you students for Rand? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice, cool. Yeah, I was in Rand camp Hell for yeah. like three weeks before the caucus. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it took everybody by surprise when he dropped out. Me? I, uh, yeah, I thought he was at least going to hit uh, New Hampshire. Yeah. We have completely shot over time. That's, yeah. No, no. Just We're saying. good. I, I mean, we did good on the time and the topics, in my opinion. <laughs> I was, was going to say, like, <laughs> the, last, the last 10 minutes has just been us talking about voting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From an election It's aggression. Years. We shouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. Um, yeah, so just for the sake of people will see an hour and a half long show and not want to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably cut this. Uh, probably. But, um, <laughs> Wait, what? What? I can't see that. What does it say? No, I just what? look down here. Oh, okay. I see it now. Yeah. No worries. Right. I mean, we only had one topic left, and we have enough time to talk about that next week. So, Right. Well, next week we have a very special show. Cool. Ooh. You set it up. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's going to come on next week. It's going to be the one after. Uh-oh. Yeah. No. Oh, do we have somebody coming on? Yeah. Who? We've got uh, Miles coming on. Okay. From Operation Regroup. That's fine, then. It's fine for him to have more time. I'm okay with that. Okay. All right. Well, we were supposed to have a socialist come on and debate us on guns. Yeah. But apparently he's not yeah. next week. Oh, well. Next, he he yeah. might be coming on in the future. Yes. I was really looking forward <laughs> to that, though. Yeah. I have been studying so hard. I can <laughs> pretend to be a socialist. I tried I once. It's not easy. I used to be rather easy. socialist. I tried. It's not easy. I tried to debate no. somebody as a socialist, and I was like, Every argument I went to go say, I was like, 
but that's wrong, and I know that. I can't say <laughs> that. Yeah. I used to be a really horrible feminazi, so. Oh. Was <laughs> thank God you're. Was that in your Katy Perry days? Mm hmm. Gotcha. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, like uh, senior year of high school, freshman year of college, I kind of like got sucked into that whole thing, and then I learned what logic and reasoning was. Was that before Gamergate? During Gamergate. Oh God. <laughs> I was I was actually a pretty conflicted human being during Gamergate. Yeah. <laughs> I think that might have actually been like the tipping point for me. To not be a feminist. A feminist. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, they were. They're ruining our games. Well, SJW. Yeah, they are. SJW. Really in bad. General. Yeah, yeah. So there's a. The, I know you're not gonna know this. I had no clue what you were talking uh, about. There is this game that just came out a few weeks ago called Kingdom Come Deliverance. Oh um, yeah. Okay. Pretty disappointing game, but yeah. Wait, disappointing. I heard good things about it. No, I haven't heard anything good about it yet. But well, I haven't played it yet. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing is, so this is a uh, 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 open world RPG game. Think of <laughs> Skyrim. You may have heard of it, Matt. I have heard of Skyrim. Yes. Yeah. And but this game is not a fantasy game. It's uh, a fictional historical setting in Czechos- the uh, Czechoslovakia in the 17th century, I think. Um, so it's knights, swords, whatever, fictional story, and the social justice warriors of you know the the gaming left basically got mad at the creators and they're calling them white supremacists because there are only white people in the game in 17th century Czechoslovakia the Sorry, game I was the, having the, a stroke yeah yeah the game is basically non-inclusive by not having you know Black people and, I don't know, transgenders, mm. I guess. <laughs> you know, mm. Might as well throw that in. But yeah, it was fucking crazy, man. I'm just like, 17th century Czechoslovakia, yeah. yeah that d- During the Holy Roman uh, Empire, the HRE, like, no, there's not going to be anybody aside from white European men. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, but, I mean, reality yeah. things. Yeah, social justice yeah. warriors are ruining our entertainment. Like uh, again, World War Two movie that just came out uh, a few months ago, they were mad that there were so many white men, and it's like that's mostly that who served. Right, that was who served in the oh, army. Oh yeah, during yeah. That when time. Uh, the Dunkirk, Dunkirk, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. They did similar in Assassin's Creed Origins. It was like I'm such a nerd. I was like doing their <laughs> discovery tour thing. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's like. Basically, the game, it's like a little walkthrough of, like, Egypt. And, oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so there's, like, this one part where you go to, like, basically the area where they would do, like, the Socratic dialogue and such. <clears throat> and um, there's, like, little girls and little boys learning. Yeah. And, like, it made a little, like, offhanded thing. And it was, like, you may see that there's females sitting here. Uh, but, you know, historically speaking, that's not accurate. It was only boys, but our team decided to put women in there for gender, like, inclusivity. Oh, my God. And I was like, hmm. I literally wouldn't care, but just, like, the fact that you, like, like, if there was all boys sitting there, I wouldn't have been like, I'm not being represented. Ah, like. Yeah. I don't know what they think. Like, I'm sitting there. I I really do. I think that they think that I'm going to sit there and just, like, bitch that there's, like, no little girls being educated in Egypt and, like, God knows when. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But, hey. No, no. Whatever. It's it's idiot. Thanks, development team. Right. Thank you for throwing that in there. Uh, Yeah. And I think even Ubisoft, everybody was laughing at them. They're a a They used to be. They used to be really good. I I remember them from my 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 days of playing Tony Hawk. Yeah, well, <laughs> they uh they they posted a, a picture or something talking about like uh their hiring practices and how. Oh yeah. Right, you remember that? I w- well yeah I was actually just bitching about that like two weeks ago because it came up on my screen and I just like rolled my eyes and I was like thank you now I feel like I can ethically play this game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they were talking about like. How like they pretty much are you know have fifty percent of the employees I think are women and it's just like 
You're worried about the gender of your developers and not their skills? Right. Yeah. Like, that's wrong. I mean, that's... And that's part of the reason probably why Ubisoft uh, sucks today. Right. <laughs> um, their games suck now. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. We're very yeah. over time. Yeah, we are way over time. We, yeah, we're, we're, we all had We, just, we, we all just keep fun. going up. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, Mo, real quick question. Do you know what Monday is? Yes. What it's is Monday it? the... So today's the... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Far Cry 5. <clears throat> you don't know? Far Cry 5. Yeah, I, why? Why the fuck would I know that? <laughs> why the fuck are they releasing it on a Monday? These are all things I want to know. Yeah, What's yeah. happening Monday? All right, Taylor, check your phone real quick because I sent you the answer. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Taylor, what's Monday? Your birthday. You're dude, a terrible friend, dude. It's your birthday. <laughs> You are a terrible goddamn friend. <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah, last year you gave me the wonderful book. Yeah, I gave you a book signed by Judge, Judge Andrew Napolitano by, by himself. Judge. Yeah. Nice. So I got it at the Mises Institute. It's we're awesome. going to go hey, out. Really? We're going to go out and celebrate tonight. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Because it's all you can drink of. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to celebrate tonight. Hell yeah. But... Uh, I was really hoping she would look at that before I asked that question. Yeah. Because nope, that would have been sorry. really, really I was embarrassing like, for you. super focused. I know. You started talking about video games, and I was like, I got no clue. <laughs> I have no, no clue idea. It's there... fine. I'll drag you into the community. Yeah? Please. Yeah. So much fun. You have a much better shot than he does. I don't care who does <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, but yeah. Monday's my birthday. Thanks for being an awful friend. Um, <laughs> Facebook hasn't told me yet. <laughs> yeah, I know when yours is. <laughs> Mine's easy. <laughs> Mine's easy. No. Yes. It really isn't. It is. Not not as easy as mine is. It's March 20th. Oh, my mom is a libertarian April 20th. <laughs> easy. Oh, 420. <laughs> yeah, literally, yeah. <laughs> also Hitler's birthday. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's Very, a Nazi. Yep. Knew you were a Nazi. Yep. <laughs> okay, seriously, we got to end this show. Okay. Yep. Jesus Christ. Yep. Um, thank you all so much for listening. <laughs> Would you like to plug anything uh, before we end the show? No, I'm good. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, officially, once again, let's thank Taylor Marie Anderson for joining us. Uh, she is my favorite member of the Muddied Waters of Freedom. Aw, you're my favorite now, too. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're creating an alliance. Yeah. It's the white people alliance. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more white than you guys are, so. No. <laughs> Nah, I'm pretty sure I'm like full on white girl. And Tifa would have you th think otherwise, so. Oh, well, they. Yeah. Okay, well, look, we're not going into another. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going on another tangent. No, I'm cutting it. No. All right. Let's, yeah. All right. So okay. thank you all so all right. much for listening. Thank you for uh, watching. Uh, please like, please share. Thank you to those who already do share. Jasmine. And <laughs> thank you for commenting. You can find us at facebook.com backslash muddied waters of freedom. You can find us on Instagram at muddied waters of freedom, or you can find us on Twitter at muddied underscore water. And we are always online at muddied waters of freedom dot com. Taylor, hang on. I'm going to mute you because I think I figured out how to do that. And if not, just be quiet. And then we'll <laughs> talk after the show. I'm not like trying to like tell a woman what to do. Or whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, we'll be back on in a second. Um, anyway, uh, thank you all so much. And all right, guys, remember where we're going. We don't need roads. <laughs>
So I can get you 